Hi everyone, it's Plus KP here from coming in from Melbourne, Australia. Let me tell you, we've got Kathy Sissy Clarkson, we've got the fantastic world famous Spencer Drake with us. Now we've got one of the greatest drummers out there in the world, Tommy Price. We love him. Joan Jett and the Black Hearts. I mean, his musical genre and who is who's he played with? Billy Idol. It goes on forever and ever, doesn't it, Spencer? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I've seen Tommy play. Uh, he's an amazing drummer. I always get on my, I know you're like this plastic on my radio show uh, up, to, to, up to this year. I've had a lot of drummers on, and Tommy's one of the best I've ever seen play. He's a real power drummer, I, I call him almost, and he's, uh, there's several in that category that are standing, like Carmine, Carmine at Peace and, I even think Mark Ramones in there, and uh, of course, remember the old Bonzo Bonham and Keith Moon and all that stuff. But Tommy is in there; he's on that top list. So when you're talking drumming, you're talking Tommy Price. Uh, I remember I first got exposed to him with a group called Scandal, uh, Tommy, uh, uh, and that that was in the beginning, right? With Scandal. Uh, not quite. You got to go a little bit b uh, before that with Mink Deville. Mink Deville. Oh was, yeah, Mink Deville. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I did a few records with with Mink Deville and actually uh, cut my teeth on touring with Willie mm -hmm. Deville in uh, you know late seventies. Um, you know, touring all throughout Europe and Australia and and Japan um, with Mink Deville. So. Um, yeah, I, I first uh, first touring days, uh, early touring days were totally from uh, let, let's say seventy eight to eighty two was uh, was was all Mink Deville before Scandal, wow. yeah, and then later on Scandal, like around eighty one eighty two, I started uh, working with Patty Smythe and and Scandal, but uh, the early days were, um, you know. Mink Deville, and even before that, it was a band on RCA Records, um, produced by Jimmy Iovine, mm. uh, called Flame. Mm. And, um, wow. uh, yeah, th that was like 1977, 78, and it was a you know it was a hard rock band from Brooklyn. Yeah, um, they were signed on RCA Records, and Jimmy Iovine. That's how I hooked up with Jimmy. Was was from Flame. And um, yeah, I started doing a couple of Jimmy's records or early, early in, in those days. But um, yeah, and, and you had a very intense career with uh, Billy Idol and of course Joan Jett uh, that I designed for, and you were part of it so many years. Uh, tell us about uh, why don't you go through the progression from Billy, uh, you know, from Billy Idol to Joan Jett? Well, from it was really from scandal to Billy Idol. So, okay, yeah. Uh, it, you know, I I hooked up with Billy uh, doing the Rebel Yell album. I was I was working on with Scandal in the studio, mm. uh, working on the Warrior album. Uh, oh wow, yeah. And um, and they needed a drummer. Uh, Billy needed a drummer. Billy was working at Electric Lady, the same studio we were recording the Warrior album in. They were working upstairs in Studio C, and Scandal was downstairs in Studio A working <laughs> on the Warrior. Wow. And they couldn't find a drummer, and uh, they heard me playing um, downstairs, asked me to come up, and I was actually doing both records I wound up <laughs> with the Warrior album and the Rebel Yell album wow. at the same time. Uh, and um, both records came out same year, 1984, um, mm. the Warrior album and Rebel Yell, and both were in the charts. Right. So, uh, right. Yeah, but that transition, I, I went from Scandal into Billy. Um, yeah, Jeff, from recording both records. How, how did you jump into Joan Jett? That also was another, uh, I knew Kenny Laguna when I was young. And I played on a demo uh, that he produced 
when I was a teenager, and he never forgot me. So when he wow. was when he put when he was putting the black hearts together, he called me. Um, uh, unfortunately, I was I had just gotten the Mink the Ville job, and, oh. and I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't do the Joan Jet thing. So they got Lee Crystal, and um, and then a few years later, Lee left the band, and then I I slipped in after you know. I was kind of doing both Billy Idol and Joan Jett kind of at the same time. Um, yeah, I want to I want to show you so, two albums that Judith and I designed with uh, Meryl Laguna, and uh, yeah. you you're on this one. This is a nice yeah. album. Yeah, I think yeah. the Beach Beach Boys are on this, right? I mean, they I think are. Mike Love and that was the that's the, actually the first record um, that. Kenny Laguna managed to get all the Beach Boys together in one studio. That's to amazing. Do, to do um, as the first time they were together in ages to to sing on uh, one of them songs. I think the song "Good Music," wow. title from the record. Yeah, yeah. And then the second album is one of my favorites. Oh my God, pure and simple. I mean, this album. I love this album and and the back the photographs are amazing too. Tommy you're in all these photographs. I mean this is like George Coles there George was Coles did this photo shoot that was yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. You skipped one record though, Spence. There's a record in between called Notorious that mm -hmm. uh, that I did with Joan. It was um before Pure and Simple. Ah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But um, you're the one you you worked on that record too, right? You, I didn't work it. No, I didn't work on Notorious. I worked on the no. I mean this one, the Pure and Simple. Oh yeah, yeah, designers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, they're great photographs. I got this photographer George Hulse, who did an amazing shoot on this. And then the the post. I remember that shoot. That, that I remember that shoot. That was in in Soho. We did that shoot. Yeah, you're right. On, on Mulberry Street. I remember that shit. Oh my God. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. So now I want to, I want to also bring everybody up to date now. So now we have the CD. Mm -hmm. We have Tommy's new CD called Downtown Phantom. And uh, this, how, where was this released? Um, 2018, it, it was finished in 2018. As of now, it wasn't officially released. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, it's kind of still on a shelf right now and I'm still waiting to get it released. So I'm having, uh, that's my issue right now with that record is uh, I'm getting a release day on, date on it. I'll tell you, it's a great album. I, I love the production on it. it it's a real power yeah. album. And it's that, great. I'll tell you, yeah, you know, don't you agree, uh, t Tommy? I love it. I love that record. I, I mean, it's it it stand it still stands up. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, even though I've recorded that over the years, um, and, and we packaged it and put me put it together. Yeah. You know, a few years ago, um, it's one of them records where it'll it's going to still stand up. It doesn't sound dated. I don't think it'll ever sound dated. You know, right. I, right. I have records in the past, like the Price Salton record and um, some past recordings I've done on my own. You know, I'm talking about Tommy Price stuff yeah. that um, that sound very dated, sound very 80s, very 90s. This record, I think, is going to stand up. It's going to sound it's going to sound good 10 years from now. But yeah. um, the songs on it are really cool. I love the songs on it. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm dying for a producer or a director from from a from a big film to to grab one of these songs because a couple of them, yeah. like like uh, Breaking Out of Missouri or Sitting on Gold, they're total movie soundtrack kind of songs. That's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That that reeks from this album soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really that's does. what I'm looking to do with that record. Oh wow! Great. Now I've got to ask you, Tommy, if you got any great stories about Billy Idol, or let's say Joan Jett, or with our great friend Ricky Bird. I mean, what's it like being there behind the drums, man, and just holding it? Because you, you got to understand, the drummer's the one that holds the glue between the That's band. Right. If you haven't got a good drummer, 
You haven't got a good band, have you? No, the, the drummer drives the bus, buddy. You know, it's it's the drummer that 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 steamrolls it down the road. You know, it's um, it's like uh, I, I was the Osborne. I always remember what he said. He says the drummer sets the beat, sets yeah. the beat. You know, he keeps the whole group together. I mean, the, the drummer is the main cog of that group to yeah. keep the keep the timing right, Tommy. The timing and the yeah, it's the whole groove. I mean, it falls apart if you don't have a good drummer. It's uh, <laughs> right. You got to. I also got to say, how many stories have you heard about successful bands? And once they make it, the first person they dump is a drummer. I don't know what that is either. <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, well, if we had enough time, I'd tell you some stories, but I'm going to save that for my book because I'm working oh, you're on doing it. Oh, great. I'm still working on, on the same book that I've been working on, Spencer, that I told you about last year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. It, no, it takes a long time, man. You know, it does. Yeah. It does. Um, Just gathering material and pictures and, um, and um, you know, getting people together to, uh, to make s certain – quotes or statements um you know it, it's uh it, it takes a while so I'm, I'm still i'm still in the process of doing that but it's going to be great uh, it's it's yeah. sort of a coffee table book where you know a lot of people want to know about my gear the kind of drums yeah. i've used on whatever record yeah yeah that's good it's, stuff you know so it's going to be it's going to be a fun a fun it's not going to be like sit there and you have to fucking read you know, three hundred pages. It's going to be a, <laughs> it's going to be a barn burner. You know. <laughs> I like looking at the pictures too, but let me tell you, Tommy. Once you get it together, you come back on the show so we can tell them about this book and get them to start buying the book for you. So make sure That's you come back on once you got that together. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. Yep. Now, yep. I want to ask you, Tommy. Um, you are coming out with an EP now. The song um, "Sex Drums and Rock and Roll." Is yeah. that going to be on it, or is that one from a past? That's a CD. I I, uh, I had a project in in the in the early nineties. Um, I wrote a bunch of songs, and um, I put a band together in New York City. I was fronting the band, was playing guitar. Um, I hired another drummer, and. Um, so I was kind of front, I was fronting the band, but I had two drum sets set up on stage. Um, the second kit that I would play was kind of like a Dave Clark five kind of mm. drum set. So they were, I wasn't sitting down, I was standing up, you know, so I'd run back and forth. I'd run from the mic to the drums and sing. And so it was, it, it was uh, at the same time, still have the other drummer playing. But um, it was a lot of fun, and um, and uh, yeah, I just I did a bunch of gigs in New York City. But that was that was a great time. The the sex drums and rock and roll uh, that lasted for about five or six years, and um, and then I started doing a project called uh, Tommy Price's Special Forces, and um, it's kind of the same deal. Same, you know, I hired I had another drummer. But it was brand new songs, and I had everybody in camo on stage, all camo gear. You know, everybody was in, you know, army camo, camouflage yeah, yeah. stuff, and yeah. it was kind of cool. I, I, I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm a frustrated guitar player, so you know, I, I, I make wow. a living playing drums, but I love playing guitar and sing. So I do that kind of on the side, but it's oh, wow, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting to bring like up, I, I, uh, Tommy, you're in, uh, in my life, I interviewed Zach Starkey uh, for Punk Globe magazine. I met I met Zach in the city um, and I was with you. I was with you and Steph. That's right. And, and, and Steph was nice enough to mention it to me. And I said, oh, yeah. So I, I got down there. There were, It was a showcase. Right. Remember, it was a showcase. And That's what I remember is that blew my mind. It's going to tie in what you're saying. He was playing lead guitar. He wasn't right. playing drums. He was That's playing, right. lead, and everybody was like freaking out because they all. I, I think they all thought he right? had Clem Burke playing drums. What? Do you remember he had Clem Burke playing drums? That's right, Clem Burke playing drums. So I'm thinking to myself, this guy 
is like what you're talking about that you yeah. want. He's he loves drums, but he loves guitar, That's and he right. does both. So right, so it's the same, I, same, same thing. right away. Right. That's right, same thing. That was his uh, his wife's showcase. What's her name? Shush. Shush Lagoos. Yeah, yeah. Shush Lagoos. Yeah, that was a great night. That was um, yeah. Me, Clem, and uh, we did. We I got pictures from that night that you took. Yeah. Um, me, me, um, me, Zach, and and Clem, uh, yeah. in oh, VIP man. area. Yeah, that was great. That that was like a night that was very electric to me. You know, it was the right? place was packed and and we had a great time, man. Yeah, it was amazing. And and maybe I hopefully I've been in touch with Zach once in a while, but I hope I can see him again. You know, he's way far away. But it's like he's a really nice guy. You know, right, Tommy? He's like Jack is a sweetheart. Guy. We yes. looked up together when we supported The Who. The last Joan Jett uh, tour I did in 2015 was um, supporting The Who. Mm. And we were out with The Who for a couple of months. And Zach and I got really, really tight, very friendly. We'd hang out all the time. And we became pretty good friends. And and our wives got close and all that good stuff. And it was all a big family affair, you know. And we always kept in touch. That's how I wound up at, at his show downtown when I saw you that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what's amazing with Zach? Keith Moon taught him how to drum, even though he's dad's Ringo. I mean, That's he's right. into the Who music. That's what's Keith even Moon. more, you know, like crazy. Keith Moon was his godfather. Yeah, that's right. Wow. But how great right. is that? Right. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had some great stories. Eh? He told me some great stories about about how Keith, when Keith used to babysit for him. <laughs> uh, Imagine that. And then you got, and then you got Nirvana, Nirvana drummer Greg Crow, uh, Greg Roll. I, uh, I always get this crazy. Why can't I say his name? Uh, you know, the Nirvana Dave drummer. Grohl, Dave Grohl. Yeah, Dave Grohl. I'm sorry. Dave Grohl, amazing, right? Now, he did the same thing. He It's a great story with him. He, Of course, he was the drummer. So then he decides to go on guitar, right? And he, I, I saw him on an interview, and he said to me, uh, he said, not, no, he said to the people listening, he says, I can't understand it. I switched from drums over to guitar, and people are going nuts. It's like they don't like it. And I said, you know, I thought to myself, this is really crazy. People are really nuts, right? Well, I said, mate, that, well, probably more, more or less the drummers got pissed off because they want to see him behind the drums. Yeah. You know, he's an amazing drummer. He's done all those great records and, you know, like Queens of the Stone Age, beyond Nirvana and Foo Fighters. You know, he's done a lot of great stuff. And so a lot of drummers like me, uh, and his fans, they want to see him playing drums. Right, right. I remember the first time I was right. a big, I was a big Genesis fan, and uh, so when Phil oh. Collins started, you know, released yeah. his Face Value album, you know, um, and hired uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 um, uh, uh, I forgot his name. Matt, what's his name? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I got pissed off, you know, and I'm sure a lot of Phil Collins fans wanted to see him play drums. And, of course, he had to do it. You know, there was two drum sets set up on stage. And, and you know, eventually, if you if you hung out long enough, you'd see him play drums. But I, I know the feeling. Being a drummer, you want to see that. You want to you want to see that guy that you love and listen to on on these records play drums you don't want to see him fucking play guitar <laughs> i get it you know why because you're stereotyped it's like ringo can't be a guitarist right. ringo is the world's greatest most famous drummer That's never right. was a, a more famous drummer he was the first in 1964 and i mean for them to change instruments it's like the beatles you got the image of the beatles don't change the image you know, That's like, right. I'll give you an example. For example, Billy Idol, Rebel Yell, White Wedding. I mean, these are sing songs that mold the artist. They're the ones they want to see. They're the songs they want to hear. You can do whatever you want. 
But that's Billy Idol. Those two songs right there. Am I right or not? <laughs> that's right. I agree. That's right. Yep. What you and, 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 and it's like going backwards again. Zach Starkey, he is a great guitarist. I mean, it's like, why would people get upset that goes to guitar? When we were there, we saw him play, right, Tommy? I mean, yeah. he's, he knows the stage. He's he knows he's been there before. It's yeah. like he's got the whole thing down. That's what blew my mind. It's like he had the whole thing. It's like he played there for years, right? I, I know, but you want to see, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of them have people who are frustrated. They want to see him behind the drums whacking yeah. away. You know, yeah. they want to see him. They came to watch him play drums. So they don't right. want to see him fucking playing guitar. You know, <laughs> you know he plays, he's a, he's a brilliant drummer. And, um, and I, 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 I agree, but you know, um, I'm one of them guys, and every once in a while, I like to play guitar. So, well, you listen. You should go out there and play Whoa. guitar, goddammit. <laughs> you'd probably be a good guitarist. You know, you're probably a really good guitarist. So, oh, I'm I'm okay. I mean, I'm I'm not great. I I, I play I play guitar. You know, very, I, I'm an average rhythm player, but I, you know, I like playing along with my own drums. So when I'm writing a song and recording drums. I like playing guitar to it because uh, I, I, it fits in instead of me telling another guitar player what to do, I do it myself. And, and, and it, and, and it's just as good. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you something else. Uh, when you grew up, uh, you look probably at other drummers, maybe, uh, you know, like Ginger Baker, I remember his movie where he tells the story that he didn't like Bonzo Bonham and Keith Moon. He loved the jazz drummers, the yeah. jazz drummers. But uh, what, were there drummers that you that you looked up to or influenced by? Um, uh, it, mostly the soul, the soul, the, the guys with that played R and B music. You know, like mm. like Dino Dinelli. Oh um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, as much as I loved rock and roll, and I'm I'm, I'm you know I'm I'm just a, 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 a John Bonham fan as I am anyone oh, else. Yeah. No, I love John Bonham. Grew, grew up on Led Zeppelin uh, yeah. and Keith Moon. Of course, you know, I loved Keith Moon. The Live at Leeds record I wore out to death. Right. Um, but but the but the 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 real the stuff that moves me is mm -hmm. like the soul soul music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Blue Eyed Soul. I, I love Dave Clark Five. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love the animals. Right. Um, uh, that kind of that kind of blue-eyed soul, uh, righteous yeah. brothers, the the you know the young rascals, the righteous yeah. brother, that kind of shit really moves me. And mm -hmm. I love playing. I used to love playing drums to that. And th those are the records I grew up um, learning. I learned drums from those records. Wow. So it was never really like a technical thing for me. It was more of a uh, 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 a soul, uh, heart and soul, you know, I felt it more than thought about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, no one actually taught me. I taught myself, you know, just learning from those records. Right. Exactly. Can I ask you with Dina? I just got to say, now here's a drummer and it, it's not that he's a, an artist, like a showy artist. It's just that he totally understands drums. And it's one thing coming on, and being able to play the beat and being able to understand every single note you play, plus bringing this style of either spinning the drumsticks or hitting the drums or doing something that's so unique. That he's not only one of the greatest drummers, but he's also one of the greatest showmen as well. And that's what it is when you're on stage, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, uh, I just watched a clip from the the Ed Sullivan show with Dino Dinelli, and, mm. um, and uh, yeah, he was a showman before the dr drummers were were actually you know uh, looked at as, as as like part of you know as like a, a um, spectacle or you mm -hmm. know I mean he was way ahead of ahead of his time, Dino right. Dinelli, you know he was doing all of that fancy stuff. But at the same time, holding it down. And, yeah. uh, 
Yeah. I mean, I'm yes. blown away with you when it comes to the 60s. I am. What's and that? I don't know, Rob, I've got to say something. Being yeah. a drummer is not an easy task, right? Especially when they do the video clips. What I love is they've got the guitarist, like they've got Joan Jett, they got Ricky at the front with the guitars. Then they come and zoom in on you at the back on the drums, and it's like a different scene. Like there's different angles of a band that makes all the difference, and that's what actually lifts the clip when each member is like a star of their own when they're performing. That, that, and that's what I see with Joan Jett and the Black Arts. I just see that they're so great and so powerful as musicians. You'd agree with that? Um, yeah, sure. At the time when you were touring with me, Bill, and then um, you saw the whole show of the Black Heart. Uh, it was a show I saw John Jett and the Black Hearts before I joined the band from Radio City Music Hall. And I was invited to one of their shows from Kenny Laguna. And, um, and this was around the time where uh, he was trying to get me in the band. And I was in the middle of a Mink Deville uh, tour. And um, so I went up to see the show. This was the, 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 the I Love Rock and Roll tour. So they were yeah. huge. They were, they were on Broadway for, I don't know, a week or so doing the I Love Rock and Roll tour. And it was sold out shows at Radio City. And I was, I was invited to one of the shows. And that's what convinced me to join that band was a show that I saw behind the desk, <clears throat> behind the, the um, mixing console. I watched it from the back of the, the room. Now, you gotta understand this is the best sounding music place you can get in, in the world. Radio City Music Hall, any band sounds amazing there. I mean, anybody yeah. can make a live album from that place. Right. And, um, and this is the Black Hearts were at the top of their game. They had a number one record. They were doing coming off a huge tour, and, um, and you know, and there was no one like them. And I watched the whole show, the four of them, on stage from the from the from the back of the desk. And I swear mm -hmm. to God, that convinced me. I thought I was watching the Beatles. Ah. It, was like, it was like the four of them looked so cool, and they sounded so perfect. It was like they were every, the, they were all music. They were all moving in 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 sync. And, you know, the three boys were, were doing exactly the same thing together. You know, Joan was up front, and it was a It was like a choreographed, beautiful play that I was watching. And that night, I went backstage to Kenny and said, "I'm in. Whatever you have to do, you know, I want to be in this band." Yeah. And um, a couple of months later, we wound up. I mean, you know, he didn't fire anyone. You know, it just kind of worked out. Lee, Lee wound up leaving the band. And I, I slid right in. Right, it, right. It worked out perfect. But that, yes, that's the night that 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 it was just oh, it all like fell into place with me. With that, I saw Joan Jett and the Blackhearts play. I was supposed to bring my portfolio to Kenny and Merrill at the show. It's a great story, Tommy. So I, I'm at this. I forgot where it was. It was in New York, and she she would listen to this. She was opening up. For James Brown. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Opening up for James Brown. And nobody remembers this show. Whenever I ask them, they don't remember the show. But she, and I brought my portfolio. I'm talking to Kenny and Merrill. The show is unreal. She, she's like perspiring, you know, the way she does it. She gives yeah. all herself to the audience. I said, this is it. I got to work for her. I'm not going to L.A. L.A. wanted to hook me up with... Um, that uh, L.A. rock uh, female artist. Uh, I uh, anyway, I said, I got to work with Joan. Forget about it. I'm giving that up. I'm not going to L.A. I'm going to work. And I did. And, and Kenny said, yeah. He says, uh, he called me up. He says, uh, would you like to design our next album cover? And that's how I started. But uh, the, the, about Joan, she, she, you could feel her. And she was always that way as a person, too. And she still is. Uh, she gives her whole body to people, her whole self. And that really encouraged me 
uh, you know, to even work with her because of that energy, Tommy, you know? Yeah, yeah, it, it does. She, it, you definitely feel that when you're around her. <laughs> She gives. She come. She gives that off. You know. Um, yeah. uh, you know. She's a real workaholic. She. You know. When you're around her and she's into that whole mindset, when uh, she's like working on a record or doing a tour, uh, you know, she puts her mind and soul into it, and you know, and uh, and gives it her all. She's. Uh, she's. She's one of these people where it's either all or none. Uh, yeah. Everything yeah. she does, everything she does, it's not just music, it's 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 everything. So she she lives by that rule. Now, Tommy, you do have a song, a song "Sweet Life" in a soundtrack for a film with Joan Jett. That was really exciting. Read about yeah. That. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell us about the song "Sweet Life" because that's on your own your own label with your own band, right? That that was they, they actually used one of my songs um, for the for the film. I I don't know if it was a song they used at the end of the film. It, at one point they yeah in, in the movie I I can't even remember what what it was uh, what scene it was, but it was one of my songs um, from um, I think it was Sex Drums and Rock and Roll. I think it was from that record. Um, yeah. Uh, from that CD, but on um, Sweet Life, and then there was um, a film that I, I did a record in 1987 with a pal of mine, a Chasm Sultan, um, on CBS Records. It was called Price Sultan album, and it was all my songs and Chasm songs that we wrote wow. together. And uh, it was a song um, that they used. Um, uh, for a film called The All Nighter, it was a surf movie f that starred Susanna Hoffs from The Bangles. Oh yeah! And in fact, her mom directed the the, the video. Wow! And, yeah, there are a couple of couple of films that that um I have some songs in, but um yeah, those those are a couple of them. But The All Nighter was a, like a surf movie, and they and they in fact they shot a video. From one of my songs, from one of the Price Salton albums, wow! Um, and um, and yeah, they used that for the for the trailer for the movie. Excellent, excellent. That's amazing. I've got to say, it's been a fantastic interview. And before yep. we go, Tommy, I just want to ask you if you can tell everybody your links to your fantastic mu movie. And as I said, this new book that you're going to have coming as well. There's so many great things for the fans coming up, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, I got a lot of good stuff in the in the book. Um, it's going to be packed with all my gear. Or you know, a lot of the fans have been asking me for pictures of uh, the drums I've used in certain videos. Uh, wow. You know, uh, the drums I've used on certain records. So um, uh, I, I just decided to put this book together and talk about the drums and yeah, the, you know, uh, it was a couple of kits used in the early uh, Billy Idol uh, videos, you know. Uh, so we'll talk about a bunch, all, most of my gear, but it's also going to be, uh, you know, sort of my biography, my, my discography also, you know. So, um, yeah, that and, and the Downtown Phantom, you know, I'm looking to push that. That's, that's, uh, that's my new CD. That's yeah. It. Um, so you can find that... Um, uh, you know, um, I'm I'm just I'm working on a, a brand new website that's coming out any day now, and it'll be um, Tommy Price at uh, uh, Tommy Price at net dot com, and then um, you know, uh, Reverb Nation's always got the Downtown Phantom record, uh, so yeah, anything anything with my name attached to it you'll be able to find the information. That's wow. fantastic. I just want to say on behalf of, on behalf of Jim Stars, it's been a fantastic interview. And Plastic EP and Spencer Drake and Kathy C.C. Carlson, want to thank you so much for being on the show today. It's been Thanks, a total buzz. Let me tell you, all your fans here in Australia, believe me, they can't wait for the book. And we'll do everything we can from this end to tell everyone about it. We thank you so much, Tommy. 
Hey, listen, I want to I want to put just one thing. Tommy, how do you I know you moved from New York to Texas. How do you like it down there? I love it, man. I love it. It's working Good. out perfect. I love it. Excellent.